This is the Woman's Hockey Life Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of the WHL Podcast University Edition. Today, we've got Quinn Johnston from Queens University. Pretty special guest here today. Excited to have her in her fifth year majoring in business. She's basically doing it all, crushing it all, and, and we're excited to have you. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to get started. I love it. I love it. I love to do intros, but at the same time, I feel like when I let you introduce yourself and kind of a little bit of background about who you are, where you grew up, how you got into hockey, it just always sounds better because it's coming from you, which is the source, you know? So why don't you just dive in, tell our, our listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So like you said, I'm Quinn Johnston, originally from Toronto, Ontario, but um, decided to attend Queen's University for both hockey and um, the commerce program. And I'm in my fifth year there. Um, I'm a forward on the team currently, and it's going to be my fifth and final year, although I have one more year of eligibility left. I think I, it's time for me to start a career after this. But um, I guess kind of going back to the beginning, I started when I was about three years old um, and learned to play. My parents put me in learn to play. And I absolutely hated the practices. I would cry every single time <laughs> I was put on the ice. Um, and I loved the games, loved the tournaments, but my parents eventually pulled me out. Um, so I stopped playing for a few years. My friend at age, I think we were six years old, told me, come play house league. It's so much fun. It's just games. And then one practice, I think a week. Um, and I decided to play again and absolutely loved it. And my career kind of took off from there. I've played pretty much my entire career at the Toronto Eastside Junior Wildcats organization. Um, I moved around two years. One year in Bantam, I played in Vaughan and then moved to Etobicoke for Midget and then back to Side. So, so I got my start and now at Queens. So you've been a dolphin, you've been a wildcat, you've been, you've been them all in, uh, now you're at Queens and even though you can take a sixth year, you're like, I'm good. You did the whole Van Wilder extra year already. You're like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. I think um, my body would, is going to thank me after. I know that I just, I need a little bit of time off and time away from the game, but I'm sure I'll be playing some sort of pickup hockey with some, some You'll be friends. in a beer league. You'll be in a beer I league know. someday. I'm sure I will be. That's you not the goal. Be. <laughs> it is that's the ultimate end goal forget the olympics or anything else it's like you want to be that beer league player right <laughs> the beer league standout yeah that's my my hopes and dreams currently so <laughs> well i can help you with that and also attest to taking some time off and let your body recuperate because well, i'm in my i don't even know how old i am mid to late 30s and and my body is like i feel like i'm 80 <laughs> you know so good for you for taking some time and and just kind of moving on to the next chapter Going back to how you ended up at Queens, what was that recruiting process like? Was it a dream school? Was it something that once you visited campus, you fell in love? Or, or talk to me a bit about that. Yeah, I I definitely say Queens was a little bit of a dream school for me. My dad attended Queens University, so often when we were little, we'd take trips up to Kingston and to around the university and the city. So I always had a special place in my heart. Um, and then throughout the recruiting process, I was mostly talking to schools down in the States. Um, and Queens was actually the only school I talked to in Canada, um, which is, yeah, hard to believe. And um, just through, I think it was basically my campus tour, meeting Matt, who was the coach. Back the field. Yeah, incredible coach. Um, and I really, I just felt at home on the campus. Um, I ended up meeting with a few of the faculties. I ended up meeting with someone from kinesiology and someone from the commerce program. Um, and my dad said that when I met with someone from the commerce program, that my eyes just kind of lit up and he knew that that was going to be the choice for me, both academically and with hockey. So um, it kind of came full circle. Like I, growing up, I always loved Queens because of my dad. My dad actually played volleyball at Queens. So he was also a student athlete. Nice. Um, and yeah, now I'm here. So I, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I'm very, very happy to be there. I would almost take a sixth year if my body wasn't breaking down. But yeah, I love it. I definitely will be visiting back um, with my kids, hopefully in the future too. Totally. So you're, you're carrying on the, the family tradition in a, in a sense, right? Dad's yeah. probably super pumped and proud of you. 
<laughs> yeah. Mom. I'm sure she is as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> she went to Waterloo though, so I think there's a little bit of bias there too, but. Maybe she'll, uh, it might be different now once you've graduated. True. I have no guys anymore, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that. So if you go back in time and think about your recruiting process, and like you just said, you you had a bunch of schools. Well, actually, yeah, Queens was the only one in Canada, but you had a ton of U.S. interest. Looking back, is there anything that you know now that you basically wish you had known while you were going through the process that you can help enlighten those who are going through it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there's a few things. Definitely grades are important, but they're not everything. Um, and I think grades are important from, I don't know how young they begin to recruit now, but at least for me, um, as early as grade nine. So I think just focusing on the studies as much as the hockey is very important. Um, Another thing too is that I wish I enjoyed the process a little bit more and reached out. To, yeah, I'm sure that's a common trend. Yeah, just even reach out, yeah. Um, but reach out to even more schools. And I think the most fun for me during the recruitment process was touring different campus campuses and meeting new coaches. So I think maybe just yeah, enjoying it and staying in the moment as well. I think everyone is rushing to make that decision. Um, and there's always, you're always comparing yourself with your peers too. So I think just um, setting your own timeline and making the right decision for you. I obviously am very happy with the decision I made, but I think I even could have taken more time, but yeah. yeah. And, and for you with the decision, obviously talking to schools, states, Canada, well, Canada, one side, yes. But like, what was the deciding factor for you? Like, what was, was it the, like, well, you already talked about being on the campus and it felt right. Like that intuitive feeling of just like love I'm gonna say I'm putting words in your mouth yeah, versus, no, that's fully accurate. yeah versus like the the more logical side of the brain of okay well do they offer the major I have which is important yes mm -hmm. and you, you check that off um but like kind of those uh pros cons list what was it for yeah. you yeah so I I definitely did do the pros cons list um for things academic hockey program some small things like dressing room um, and just campus feel. But I think ultimately what led me to Queens and what led me to my decision was that if hockey was out of the question, would I be so happy at the school with one, my um, choice in faculty and program and the city, the campus, just the overall atmosphere. I think um, sometimes if you think about I think when I was younger, I was focusing on a school for hockey um, and injuries are inevitable. You never know what may happen. So um, I'm very happy that in the end, I chose a school that I knew I would be content at, even if I couldn't be playing the game I loved. So I think that's another big thing throughout the recruitment process as well. Super insightful. Again, because like when you're young, you're grade eight, grade nine, you're starting to think about it. It's like, I just love hockey. Like the real world doesn't exist, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, wait a second. I got to focus on a career later on. And am I going to be happy here for four or five? You could have done six, chose not to. That's cool. Um, you know, four, five, six years. And you obviously made the right choice for you. But I think that's super, super important. And thank you for saying that. Yeah, of course. It is the truth, right? It is. Yeah. So you've had five years of experience of being a student athlete yes <laughs> what like in your perspective everything you've gone through what has been the most challenging parts of being a student athlete because you're a student first yeah yeah I I know this is a cliche but the time management I'll elaborate more and I'll add it something else but it kind of it kind of goes without saying that you have to be very very organized to be a student athlete. Um, classes are obviously very very busy, and so is your schedule with lifts, gym, ice baths, recovery, that sort of thing, and even prioritizing stuff like sleep and nutrition as well. That obviously adds time into your day. So just being really organized, I've I enjoy being organized. <laughs> weirdly enough, but I love putting stuff in my journal, making sure that I know exactly what I have on top for that particular day and that week and looking ahead even further into the month to see, oh, if 
maybe this week's going to be really busy and it's an away weekend with games. I'll try and get my work done a little bit before. So I think that's been the most challenging part. Um, but I would also say taking time for myself and taking like proper recovery and rest days. I think it's really challenging when you're caught up in the, in the midst of a season um, and everything's pretty much go, go, go. And that's what I love. Like I love being in a fast paced environment, but I think the pandemic had really helped me take that time and understand that I need time for me sometimes. So I think um, learning to just take maybe a Sunday afternoon off and sit and watch a movie with my housemates and cook dinner rather than try and go to the gym an extra time because it's an off day and I have the opportunity to. So I think that's a really, really important part about being a student athlete as well. Your mental health. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> Literally, like what you just said is I'm going to unwind and not worry about everything else that I'm doing the other six days of the week. Yeah. So important. So important. And it's overlooked because it's something that physically you can't quantify, right? but you can feel it, but you can't quantify it in that sense. So I'm again, happy you brought that up because that's such an important piece. And just because you're working hard, doesn't mean you're being smart about how you work. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So given everything you've said, and that you may have already answered this question because I think I already know part of the answer, but you've grown up playing the game and you've already said like, you like to be organized. You like to be busy, you like structure what else on top of that has the game taught you about yourself? About myself, I would say that I just love being around people. I think hockey has made me a very extroverted person and someone who just enjoys being a part of the team. I think also from being a part of various teams, you get to learn about different personalities and how to get along with um, various people who may have different opinions than you. So I think I've really liked that part of the game and also that challenge. Um, and this year, and I guess last year as well, I've been fortunate enough to um, be named the captain. So I have that added responsibility too. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I, that's part of my responsibility too. And I absolutely loved it. And um, I think it's something I'm really passionate about too. So I would say that, and obviously um, just being a competitive spirit, I think hockey has taught me that um, even outside of the sports and outside of the game, I love to be competitive. And hopefully that's something that I'll take on to my future career, whatever that may be. Um, yeah. <laughs> Which leads me kind of into the next question of being the student athlete, business, commerce. If, if you know, let's let's fast forward five years. Let's have this fortune ball right here. What are you doing in five years in your ideal world? your dream the ideal world okay this, this is big picture now now, okay. now I, I, just, I just went big on you I like yeah we took it to the next <laughs> level right now not what you think you can do based on the major you have and what maybe society wants you to do but like you Quinn what do you want to do I would say I definitely do want to work but I would say I also want to travel a little bit and explore different countries, different cultures. I'm hoping to do a little bit of that this summer um, right after I graduate, which will be really nice. But in terms of actual career, not actual career, because traveling is, it can be a career. I don't totally. know necessarily for me, um, but since I am in business, I hope something around there. I've worked um, at Scotiabank the past two summers. This past summer, it was in wealth management and I really, really enjoyed that. So I could see myself doing something along those lines, but ideally kind of like I alluded to before, it'd be just being a part of some sort of team and working with people, I think would make me most happy. And also, I guess in five years too, just finding a different, maybe if it's not hockey, finding a different kind of hobby or activity like running or I don't know, tennis, maybe my parents, my parents used to be marathon runners and my mom still runs pretty much every day. So I'd want to follow in her footsteps maybe. So we'll see. But <laughs> do you like running? I do. I do like running. Wow. I don't meet many, I don't meet many hockey players who like running. I hate it. Yeah. I like cool. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I think <laughs> we just, I think just seeing my mom run every single day 
when yeah. we were younger. We all, my brother and I also used to run competitively when we were younger as well. So I enjoyed that. We'd run to school when we were in elementary school. My mom would carry the backpack. So I think running's been always, always been part it. of my life. It's ingrained in you. Yeah. It's ingrained in me. But totally. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. Something like that. Maybe run a marathon. That's definitely on my bucket list. So. So what I'm hearing is whether it's wealth management, you <laughs> like teams, you like people traveling, you're a, you're a Virgo, right? September? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Cause I'm like, Virgos are generous. They like to help people. They're empathetic. Like, I'm like, that's you to a T. <laughs> that yeah, they, I don't, that's wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, I've got some good stocking skills. I was a university coach. I had to stock the players we were recruiting and like birthdays and that whole other side of Zodiac spirituality and everything else. Like I, I love it. And you can learn a lot about, and you said it already, like what you love about hockey is, is learning about different people mm -hmm. and the way they think and how they operate. Right. Yeah, definitely. But like having that understanding. And I'm like, yeah, everything you just said makes complete sense based on you being a Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I don't know much about um, that stuff, but I guess now I do. Maybe I'm going to have to do some more research after this. You might have to. I It's an ever-growing learning experience for me because I always learn something different. But I, too, love, I'm a Pisces. I love to talk to people and get to know them. And then just, uh, you know, it's it's like, how can I help? And if I yeah. know more about you, then we can do that, right? But okay, so you said that you and your brother saw your mom running all the time. So you guys ran, you competed, all that stuff. Your brother has had a good career himself. Nothing like yours, obviously. No. <laughs> um, way. But he's with the Dallas Stars, correct? Yeah. yeah, Dallas. Okay. For you, growing up in Toronto, are you a Leafs fan or a Stars fan now? Uh, <laughs> If I can say both, I will say both. Yes. I have been a Leafs fan my entire life, obviously growing up, it's my hometown team, but I do, obviously, I feel inclined to support my brother. Um, and honestly, I think if they were playing each other, I think I would cheer for Dallas. Was that an exclamation point or a question mark? <laughs> uh, exclamation mark <laughs> how about how about if you cheer for your brother but root for the Leafs that, that could work yeah yeah if my brother scored a hat trick or something but the Leafs still won four three I would You're be okay. celebrating on both ends you win yeah you totally yeah, win, win win right yeah <laughs> yeah that's my <laughs> final answer there, there you go there you go now you, you've got that one rehearsed so you can say that moving forward all right <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's get back to Queens. You guys, your season. Um, right now, I believe you guys are six and eight on break right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You personally are doing very well, almost averaging a point a game. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal, right? Which is awesome. Um, I got to ask, how are you and the team feeling moving into the second half of the season? Where's the yeah. mindset? At? I think uh, I feel like we're really confident going into the second half. I I think we know that our best is yet to come um, and we've been doing doing kind of a newish system for our group this year, um, which has been really, really, really fun um, and a really good challenge. And I think we're really starting to own it and make it our own. And it just I think the break came at a good time for us um, just to regroup, spend some time away from the rank. It's been a extremely busy first half I think compared to the past two years it's been a pretty big change for I know a lot of us so I think we're ready we're excited we're eager to play we got a lot of good teams coming up in the second half and we're excited for the challenge and I think we do really really well when we're faced with some top teams in the league so um yeah we're excited we're confident we're ready <laughs> you yeah, think you guys are ready the amount of games that you guys have gone into overtime or shootouts it's I literally don't know if I've seen a schedule like that where it's like I don't know six seven maybe eight maybe nine games have gone to overtime or shootouts for you guys what's up you guys just well, love the excitement eh? yeah well we're gonna make the game entertaining right yeah. <laughs> give fans the bang for their buck totally. um, yeah I don't I don't I can't tell you we're not trying to go to overtime necessarily every game unless we're coming from behind um but yeah I think 
it's kind of speaks to our resilience too. When, when we've been down and there was a game against U of T this year when we were losing, I want to say the score is going to be, it was maybe four, nothing. Um, and we scored. Yes. Four or five or four goals. I think in the last six minutes, they ended up winning. I think, Oh, they were up five, nothing. I think. And I think we scored four goals in the last six minutes. So kind of speaks to our, our character of the team where we're always in a game. Um, and I think that's why a lot of games have gone into overtime and shootout, but um, I think this semester, we're also hoping that if we're leading, <laughs> that we're not going to make it as interesting for the other team. And we'll just keep our foot on the gas a little bit more. <laughs> uh, I think coach Matt would appreciate that. Just yeah. that out there, you know, maybe yeah. uh, save a couple gray hairs or heart attacks, yeah. I don't know, something like that, you know? Yeah. I know my parents have mentioned that too, that they're, they're losing. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, again, it speaks to the resilience of the team, right? Like, Hey, cool. We're from behind, but imagine if we're leading now, no one's going to catch you guys, which is what yeah. makes it exciting for me to now follow you guys moving forward of, all right, what's the second half going to look like? Cause that's what matters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Second half playoffs. It's a whole new season when playoffs hit. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to try and get into the playoff mentality early and right away and hopefully continue that and just build, build each game. So I'm very excited for second half. I know we've been on break for a week and a half, maybe two weeks, but I'm already ready to go back. So <laughs> funny, right? You're like, okay, when is it? Is it time yet? Is it time? This is too long of a break. Let's go home. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, I um absolutely love you. You're you're so <laughs> to talk to. Um, I think you have got a great insight. You're very mature. Um, who knows if you took a sixth year, you'd be even more mature, but yeah. we're not going there. We're not going there. You're going to get in the real world. Maybe go play overseas or something, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Bit. At the same time, reach out to me because I can help you with that. Um, but I got to ask moving forward. Um, and again, like we have all different types of people that listen to this podcast. A big following is those who were once in your shoe. Shoes. You have two shoes, not just one. Yeah. yeah. Most yeah. of the time, yeah. Most of the time, yeah, you know, no. <laughs> but if you could give advice to those in high school right now, grade 9, 10, 11, 12, post-grad, whatever it may be, who are chasing their dreams of being where you are today, playing in university, being a student athlete, what advice would you give to them? Yeah, I think I mentioned a few before, like in addition to just enjoying it. Um, and uh, I would say just kind of put your head down and grind. I think um, it's a university can be some of the best times of your life. You can, you gain so much experience, so much knowledge, not only in the textbook, but also like in terms of street smarts and um, interacting with different people. So I think putting your head, head down, working as hard as you can, both in the classroom, on the ice and in the gym, I think you'll set yourself up for success and um, you don't want to have any regrets in the process too. So I think that if you put your best foot forward, um, you'll be happy no matter what. Um, and ultimately can lead you to a really, really awesome experience. Like I've had the pleasure of having. So there you go. Quinn, you're amazing. I love you. I can't say enough great things about you. Um, you're stuck with me for life now. Cause once we connect yeah. like this, I'm okay done. with that. Right. <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> Yes, put that one in the roster right there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I uh, again, I'll, I'll take you and and your social and anything else if if you're on it in that respect of of just being a a public figure. Um, <laughs> anything we can do to help you, let me know. But I, I truly appreciate you opening up and and talking about you, you personally, your career, how you grew up, the recruiting process, where you guys are at today, and uh, I'll be rooting for you guys in the second half. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this and enjoyed meeting you too. And I'm happy that we'll stay connected in the future. 100%. When I uh, have to come to Toronto, I'm staying at your place now. Your parents oh, yeah. have to stay. This is your bedroom. So there you go. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. That's that's my room right there. <laughs> Quinn, you're the best. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Of course. You too. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Bye.